friends, Heidi here from Rain Country, God is good, all the time. And I'm here for another This and That, which is basically a semi-weekly vlog that I do to keep you updated on some various experiments I have going on, uh, videos that I've done in the past that you might want to go check out, or what is up and coming, and also just some of the busyness that we have going on around here. So the first thing I want to mention is the... Uh, kombucha scoby that I'm creating is coming along nicely and this is basically what I'm doing is converting a real thin vinegar scoby that I had into a kombucha scoby so it is growing a little at a time so once this process is completed I'm going to go ahead and hopefully this is going to turn out good I'm eventually going to shoot a video on how you can take a vinegar scoby which I always end up with tons of and convert it to kombucha scoby for those of you who like kombucha and it's something that you want to add to your diet on a regular basis and you don't want to pay high prices for it at the store and then the thing I really wanted to talk about today was this apple powder so I finally did it a couple people had talked about doing something similar well since I've been pressing a lot of cider out from my apples this year because we just had tons and tons of apples so probably the most apples we've ever got from our tree I decided to try taking some of the pulp instead of just feeding it to the chickens or turning it into more applesauce and dehydrate them up and make a powder out of them. And so the first thing I did with them was I actually added a couple pinches to a, a cup of tea and that was pretty good that I like to have my tea in the evening, my herbal tea. And so I added a nice apple flavor to it. But then yesterday morning I made us some cinnamon apple pancakes using the apple powder directly in the batter mix and then also added some cinnamon to it and boy they turned out really good and especially topped with some real maple syrup really tasty so we both really liked how that turned out a really great way to use up that pulp from your apples after you press your cider out so if you haven't seen my video on the cider press I'll go ahead and link to that up here and down below so you can see the one that we have we don't have a grinder at this time but you can see how I did it how I ground up the apples and then was able to press them out and get plenty of cider so if you do this already please share with us down below in comments what are the different ways that you like to use your apple powder and in various things because I'm going to be experimenting some more with this because I'm already having fun with it and then talking about the apples and the apple cider you can see here now I have four gallons going of apple wine and though I initially hadn't planned on making this much because I don't drink and it I still have lots of wine left over that I made from last year both from our grapes and some from our apples and some from blackberries and uh, it's, so it seems kind of silly. Why would someone want to make so much wine, especially if they don't drink? Well, because I do have multi-uses for it, and all the time I'm finding more and more uses for the wine, you know, whether it be in cooking and baking or making, you know, marinades and extracts and various things. But also, I was thinking it would be a really great way to start preserving some of this excess because we don't, though we love the apple cider, the apple juice it makes is delicious. We're not real big into drinking a lot of juice. It can be kind of addictive and you're not getting all the great, all you know, you're getting, you might be getting a lot of the nutrients from the apple, but you're not getting all the fiber that you need and it can be just a real, uh, a lot of excess sugar. So now and then it's a great, it's great, but at any rate, doing this besides just freezing up the juice or canning up the juice where you're going to lose a lot of your nutrients this is a way that i can preserve it and have it put up for a long time it's going to last for quite a while that can have multi-uses and also this was the number one thing i started thinking of because i know there's no way we'll go through this much in a year my other thought is well two other thoughts is next year i have no idea how many apples i'm going to get off the tree because perennials tend to go through spurts where just like our grapes for two years in a row tons of grapes this year just a very minimal amount of grapes in fact this one back here is made with half grape juice and half apple juice because I got so few grapes this year I was only able to press out enough to get a half gallon of juice out of them which is crazy but I'm totally cool with that because I'm getting lots of apples but maybe next year I'll get so few of either one and so I won't have either one for making wines juices or whatever and so I want to make sure 
I'm ahead of the game for one. The other thing is I thought it would be a really good idea to have some wine on hand to use for the sake of barter. What a great barter item this can be because having it in the form of wine is going to make it more valuable anyway as well as preserving it and for those who are looking for uh, having a good quality organic wine for whatever it is that they need to use it for just like we do now I have a source of barter so hopefully somebody out there um, because at this point we still have no interest in having dairy animals and nor do we really have the space for them even with the property over there we don't want to turn that into that so uh, I w keep hoping there's going to be somebody coming along that will have um, milk that they can barter for you know raw milk you know whether it be from cow or goat milk i would love to be able to start bartering for some more of that again like we used to do because i really miss having that good quality raw milk on hand so just some things to think about that even if you don't drink learning how to make your own homemade wine is a really good option for so many different things including bartering or in you know let's say it's a big major grid down situation this could come in handy in many, many other ways. So um, if you don't, if you've never tried making your own wine, it's actually a very simple process. I use mine making my own homemade fermentation starter. I do not buy a wine yeast. I do not use bread yeast. I simply use this all entirely homemade from our own homegrown fruits. And so you can learn how to do this. First, I just, I, you know, which I do have video on this, I'll link to down below. And then I also have a playlist, it's four parts on the winemaking. The first video though, just know, is actually a this and that video. So I, I show starting the wine and then I go on and talk about other stuff. But there is three more parts to it that are focused only on the winemaking. Okay, and so something else going on here. I got my first full jar of my dried beans from my garden. I got another one filling up. I should have quite a bit more come to come because, you know, as they dry, I bring them in and then I shell them. And I'm hoping to offer these on the store, um, but it looks like I'm not getting as much of the Sunset Runner beans as I thought. And I remember now I didn't have near as many of the Sunset Runner bean plants come up this year as I did the Scarlet Runner. But what I was hoping to do was have a mixed blend of the Scarlet Runner and the Sunset Runner to offer on the store. So we'll see as we get to that, but be watching on my store. Remember, you can find that link first link in the description box down below you don't even have to click on show more to see that link it's right there and also at the very end of the video typically right down here you'll see a little red nasturtium flower pop up that is also the link to our etsy store which i currently actually have quite a few other seeds listed they're all herb seeds that i have up right now so fever few marshmallow anise hyssop which is a new one to our store this year echinacea lamb's ear and so on and we did pretty good this year on at least getting a lot of these different seeds so those uh uh, so there should be plenty up there at least for a while but don't wait too long because certain seeds will sell out and I won't be able to get any more until next year at this time so anyway those are to come but I love my runner beans my favorite beans so far and then the, the, the purple potted pole bean is my second and then I'm looking forward this next year to try another a couple more new beans hopefully to find another one that's going to do as well for us as these ones do and then another thing I want to mention again is my own homemade hot sauce. I have the fermented hot sauce, which I do have a video on. I am loving this so much. It was my first year just making this particular recipe up and then doing it in a fermented form. And so this is actually the second jar like this that I made from my own peppers from my garden. And then, you know, I have another one in the refrigerator and then I have this bottle right here and I love this stuff. It is so good and it's so healthy because it's fermented. So while I'm bringing this up, I wanted to mention somebody asked me in the video where I was talking about, you know, the, the video where I show how to make the fermented hot sauce. Um, yes, you can can it, but if you're going to can it, I don't recommend bothering to ferment it. Just make up the sauce however you want. Um, and just don't even mess around with fermenting it because once you can it, you're going to kill all the beneficial bacteria and yeast that's in here. So there's really no point in canning it. You're still going to get good benefits from the capsaicin and the different things that are in the peppers. And it will still be healthy and good for you. But if you're wanting something that's fermented, you can't 
you can't ferment something and then turn around and can it and expect to still have those good benefits. So there's no point in, in fermenting anything if you're gonna can it after that. You just, you know, it's just gonna totally kill it. But fermenting will keep it all year long. In, you know, I still keep it in cold storage. Otherwise it can get go a little bit crazy if you keep it out at room temperature. So you'll wanna keep it either in your fridge or in a cold like a root cellar or in some other cold place if you want to make a bunch of it keeping it you know fermented will keep it shelf stable for a very long time so any of my fermented stuff just sits in my refrigerator and it will last i've had some last all through the year like fermented garlic fermented peppers where i've just fermented just plain peppers you know i picked them brought them in fermented them and then stuck them in the fridge and forgot about them pulled them out and they were still good really good in fact and so this will keep for a long time but it's again still recommended to keep it in cold storage so it doesn't bubble over and just go entirely crazy and make a mess in wherever you're keeping it and then of course talking about sauces so i just put this video out so this one um should be just a couple videos back of my homemade barbecue sauce and uh, again something that you can can i didn't ferment it but i had thought about it. i thought about fermenting the the barbecue sauce and this should ferment up beautifully if you decide to do that but then again don't can it if you're going to ferment it but anyway so uh what i did last night with it was i took i keep finding i keep thinking i've used up my 2013 yes that's what i just said 2013 that means this beef right here is six years old six years ago i canned this up and this white layer you see up here that's nothing but fat from the meat in fact having that fat up there actually gives it more of a protective layer than not having it so think back in the old days where they you know some people still do this where they put the wax on top of jams and jellies to seal it to you know keep it from from going bad well here's another way that i can feel like it's pretty safe and it's all good i always check it we've had no problems so last night i made some using another jar of this and it was so good just still just as tasty coming out of the jar uh six years later as it was coming out of the jar a week or whatever after first canning it and so what i did was i simply took the barbecue sauce and this was like the simplest dinner ever took the barbecue sauce i already had made mixed it up with the beef i just strained out the excess liquid out of this and then um which i'm sure you can find uses for that you can use it in soup if you want strain out that liquid and, and save it for using as a soup base but anyway take that you know, but or you can also pour it over your dried dog food and your dog will love it so anyway take that beef mix it in with the barbecue sauce and then uh just put it serve it right over rice it is so good like that but again it's also another idea to uh put on some toast or even just some fresh bread and have an open face sandwich like i mentioned in the barbecue sauce recipe so the difference between what i'm saying here is i'm actually using canned beef instead of some leftover meat that i had in the refrigerator for something i cooked earlier in the week so the canned beef is excellent so i'm trying to get this used up because you know we just i just canned up some venison and i needed to make room for that anyway and i'm like i can't believe i still have 2013 meat back there because i also have some from 2015 and i think some from 2016 then went through a couple of years where i didn't can any because i just have so much i'm still trying to work through but uh having some canned meat on hand is just really really great idea and something like this i don't have to even make dinner tonight because we have a bunch of this mixture left over from last night so i just need to make up a fresh pot of rice and uh, there we go so and then dinner's taken care of again for tonight other than i forgot to have a vegetable for the side i just didn't even think about it until it got time to eat and it's like well i'm not really that worried about it because there's a lot of vegetables in this too i've got my mixed greens blend i've got tomatillos i've got tomatoes i've got onions i've got garlic and so a lot of good healthy stuff in this barbecue sauce so it really was pretty much a one dish meal just as is but i could also add some of my dehydrated hydrated zucchini pieces to this and that would be really good and then a couple other things i don't have sitting on the counter is i finally picked my one quince off the tree and i could just sit there and smell that thing forever it did it's a pineapple quince i'll put a picture of it here a couple pictures and right off the tree it smelled so good I, it smelled like 
pineapple to me. I could have just walked around all day holding that thing up to my nose. But of course I had to cut it open and see how it looked and give it a taste. And if anyone's ever had quince, you'll know quince is incredibly tart. And when I was a young girl, I loved to eat lemons and I still do sometimes. And we actually had a quince tree right outside our back door. And I used to like to reach out there, grab a quince off the tree and just eat it straight. And it was just so good. Now my tastes have changed a little bit. I still think the quince is really good fresh and raw however my purpose for growing it isn't so much for being able to just eat it because I don't crave the sour things as much now as I used to when I was a young girl but my purpose is because citrus trees are not something that will grow well for us here and I love lemons I love using lemons in various things in jams and stuff especially like blueberry if I'm making a blueberry jam or pie or a, a blueberry apple butter I like to throw a little bit of lemon in there because it adds that little bit of tartness to help everything just blend well and taste really wonderful and there's always rhubarb for that too but I thought uh, quince would be a nice uh, replacement for things that I like to use lemon in. So I'm looking forward to it and was surprised that we actually got, it was the only one of our brand new trees that we got fruit on it all this year. It actually had about a dozen quince on it. All the rest of them died, but there was that one and it was this big that uh, managed to stick it out all the way through until it was ripe. And so that was exciting. So I'm hoping next year to see a bunch more on our quince tree. And uh, any ideas on the best way, on other ways that you can preserve quince other than just mixing it in with other fruit? Do you, those of you who grow quince, do you ever make a jam or jelly or anything just strictly out of quince? And just some ideas so for next year I can be ready when that come, when those come around. And then another thing was I did a video recently where I talked about the garden huckleberries, but one of the things I forgot to say in the video, and I can't believe it, I had to keep adding it in text, is the garden huckleberry that, that looks almost black, the ones that I grew this last year, they are an annual. They are not at all in any way related to the wild huckleberries that a lot of people like to go out and pick. Wild huckleberries grow all around us and they are delicious and I love them, but it takes a long time to get enough huckleberries to do anything with. And I actually do have a couple of real uh, small huckleberry shrubs here on the property that I had in a place for years that they never did anything. And so the this last year I moved them over to my West herb garden and I think they're going to do better. They didn't get any fruit this year, but I'm thinking next year I might. But anyway, totally different, totally different. In fact, um, I think it's silly that they call the garden huckleberries a garden huckleberry because there's absolutely no relation. The garden huckleberry is actually in the nightshade family and the plant like I said, is an annual where your true huckleberries are perennial. So they'll, they'll be there all the time and they'll keep coming back where an annual is the plant is going to die off, but it's going to self seed. And I'm afraid I'm going to end up with a whole bunch of those coming up in my garden this next year. So I'm going to have to keep up on them because I do not want to grow them again. But anyway, very, very different. So I didn't mean to confuse people on that. That's just what they're called here. But another thing I wanted to say about that is, um, I'm just going to give my honest review on things as I grow them and I personally don't recommend the garden huckleberry though I do still find the plant to be very uh, impressive. Some people really like the flavor of it and it could also be, I thought about this later because I've thought about this with other things I've tried to grow. I think your climate and the types of soil you have can also have an effect on the flavor of the things that you grow. So some things that might not taste good grown here in rain country may have a much better flavor grown in other areas. Though I do know with the garden huckleberries, most of the people I've interacted with on these have said they've tried them and they're from all over the place. They're from all over the United States and they didn't like them either. They were not impressed with the flavor. So it's really all, you know, really it's a matter of taste and I don't mean to scare people away. That's why I said in that video, I recommend trying to grow one plant where you're at. Just find a corner somewhere and try one plant so you can at least try it and see what you think of it. I still think it's a beautiful plant, beautiful berries, and you may find use for it as a fodder for your animals or even a dye for your clothes if you want. So, you know, I don't, you know, don't not give it a try just because I didn't like them. I'm just 
being honest with you about how I feel about it. And then yes, oh look, I'm actually wearing an apron again. I've stopped wearing my aprons for a long time because um, as I, you know, going through the change made my skin so sensitive that I could hardly stand having anything tied around my neck at all. And so I had to quit wearing them for a while, but um, I'm getting back into them again. I love my aprons and I do sell aprons like these on my store, but they usually don't last long. So if you're ever interested in purchasing an apron, some people ask me, do you still sell aprons? Yes, I do. Typically, I only do them as custom orders. Lately, I, you know, because Patrick spoiled me and bought a whole bunch bunch of fabric uh, when he went out of town for a while came back with a whole bunch of fabric he did FaceTime me to see if I would like like any of them I'm like oh yes cool and so I've been making a whole bunch of aprons and got a whole bunch cut out and ready to go at least at the time I'm shooting this video I'm hard to say how much will be left by the time this video gets published but if you're ever interested just contact me directly you can contact me all our contact information is right down at the bottom of the description box don't forget to hit show more and email is one of the best ways to get a hold of me if you're interested in purchasing an apron or you can check out our store link and see if there's happens to be any up there for sale okay well that's it i think i rambled on long enough hope you enjoyed my this and that for the week thanks for watching take care and god bless